Salve Maria, welcome to our extra program on the Assumption of Our Lady into Heaven in Body and Soul, uh, the 15th of August. Uh, today we commemorate this great feast, which is the most important, which is the greatest feast that took place in heaven after the feast that took place when our Lord went, when ascended into heaven before her. Uh, we could, um, act, uh, and I would like to do it as a double homage, so to speak, as a, because firstly to our father and founder, Dr. Plinio Correa de Oliveira, because it was he who wrote this beautiful text, a series of texts which are summarized regarding the Assumption. And in the second place, in homage of my superior, Monsignor Juan Cla Diaz, uh, because it is his birthday today, so that Our Lady, uh, Our Lady of the Assumption, grant him all the graces and all the sanctity and everything that he needs to fulfill his very important task. Uh, well, today uh, we commemorate the Assumption, we're saying, but before that happened, uh, the greatest feast, as we were saying before, was the ascension of our own uh, only begotten Son into heaven, with the whole uh, lineage of people, the holy souls, from Adam and Eve until the time of his coming, that were in the limbo of the just, and they all, he took them all up into heaven behind him. And so it was a... It was the most magnificent feast that you could ever that ever took place in heaven. It was really extraordinary. The first beautiful thing was, of course, that he came to this earth, that he was born you know, on Christmas Day for us all. Uh, the Virgin, the Blessed Virgin, had a son, and the whole uh, earth, the whole world, was jubilant for this fact, you see. And this joy remains to this day. This is a special grace regarding Christmas. Uh, but now our Lord went into heaven, we, can, we are not capable of describing or to imagine what went on in the Tabor, for example, when our Lord was transfigured. But when he went into paradise, he had much more, much greater glory, much greater glory, because he had finished his earthly, uh, his passage on this earth, he had finished his mission, and he had completed the redemption. He was uh, crucified, died, was buried, and resurrected from the dead. So uh, this, he went to heaven, had a magnificent uh, feast, there. And uh, well, when he got there, and after this was coming to an end, he must have looked around and said, well, there is something missing here. It's a place for my mother. She, she, she needs a place. She has to be here in a place of honor. Uh, so he then began already to prepare the Assumption of Our Lady into heaven in body and soul, which, as you know, was a dogma of faith proclaimed by Pius XII in 1950, uh, that she was assumed into heaven in body and soul. The rest was not defined. The rest you can imagine, which are all you liked, if she died, if she didn't die, if she had a, like a, a sleeping. There's a word in Portuguese, it's called dormición, when Spanish, when, I don't know if that exists in English, it's called dormition, which is only used for, for the light sleep, as it was that Our Lady had, before she ascended into heaven. Because it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a full death, in, a, in a, at least, the theologians, the commentary, the commentaries during the times, all the times in between, from then until now, have have, uh, have never said that she had a, a full. Although the the disciples and everybody understood it as being a full death, but it wasn't. It wasn't such a. It was like a very soft uh, dormition, a soft sleeping. You know? So uh, we can imagine all of the glories existed in Mary, and these must have been witnessed and seen by the. Uh, apostles and those who were with them, the disciples, you see. We can imagine, we can imagine, because nothing will hinder us from doing that, we can imagine that the Assumption took place in Tabor itself, in the mountain of Tabor itself. So then we can see, we can judge that all of the glory existed, existing in Mary Most Holy began then to manifest itself to those who were present as before had happened with our Lord at the height of that same mountain, you see. All of the goodness, all of the softness, all the sovereignty, all the dominion, all the attractiveness, all the virginal intransigence, all the firmness which were affirmed in her in a most splendid way, uh, were mysteriously glowing, lighting up, and becoming accentuated, you see. Uh, so these uh, people must have been extremely impressed and began to sing, but later on they just they dripped up, dropped down, there was just a, a murmur going on, a very respectful murmur until a certain moment uh, when they began to look at each one of these uh, as if they'd been forgetting that someone else was there. They only looked at Our Lady, 
who did not cease to manifest successively, quintessences of herself. They had the impression that it was not the Most Holy Virgin who was going to go up into heaven, but it was heaven itself that was coming down to her. Uh, one could say that it was the, uh, the celestial dome that was becoming there more and more lower and closer to this earth. And if someone extended his hand, he could, so to speak, touch the blue with his own fingers, you see. Certainly, uh, to this corresponds at a given moment a sensation of such veneration and inferiority on the part of the apostles. But at the same time, such intimacy of Our Lady in them, that each one felt that Our Lady in his own soul, so soft, so comforting, so recomposing, so tonifying, so making reparation, and being completely a mother. They were, as it were, filled with Our Lady. At a given moment, uh, the airs, Dr. Priya says a beautiful thing, says the airs, so the wind, the airs, the airs in, in, at the place, began, as it were, the winds to move, and as it were, take on shapes which fluctuated in a very singular way. And these uh, became, gradually, one could see that the angelic figures became consistent and defined themselves around Mary Most Holy, uh, and heaven finally revealed itself, bit by bit, full of angels that were singing, full. Uh, we had arrived at the moment at the height of her splendor, but in order to show that it's, she was superior to all the angels, uh, increased this even more to the unspeakable in such a way that the angels themselves became pale uh, in comparison with Our Lady. Uh, uh, those who were present accompanied with exclamations and not perceiving that she had lost all proportion with the earth, began to realize that the time to say farewell had arrived, was arriving. Uh, Mary Most Holy began to move, to look at them with affection, seeing to, wanting to transpose a distance that was greater and greater between her and them, uh, to such a point that they felt that the separation was taking place. At the same time, they were sad and joyful. They were weeping and become ecstatic. Uh, they felt themselves uh, in heaven and in this land of exile. Uh, they, they took more attention to the angels because their singing was so beautiful. No? At a given moment, uh, they realized that Our Lady had disappeared from the apex of the column of angels before them, you see. But these continued to sing a little more in order to console them who were there, you see, the poor people who were left behind. And then gradually the angels disappeared one by one. No? They perceived then that they were together. They began to look at each other and remain absolutely quiet and silent. All of a sudden, one said in a rather small voice, shall we go home? And the other said in a soft voice, yes, because it is late. And they began to go down the mountain. No? When they went down, they were conversing among themselves. Said, Do you remember such a thing, such manifestations, such a beautiful thing that she said, such a wonderful thing that occurred, uh, etc. And this other thing, and this other thing. And then uh, when they realized they were all singing together, and then finally when they had to say goodbye to each other, they said, when, we, when are we going to find ourselves again to continue remembering these marvelous things? And they commented, there is a way of our uh, feeling ourselves always more consonant with Mary Most Holy. She is with us, and where she is, is our Lord. Now, Dr. Pino says an interesting thing. He says, as you can see, I didn't dare describe Our Lady. But yes, I described the reaction of those who saw her. He said, I don't believe that anybody, at least I do not feel that in me, has the talent or the capacity to describe her with all, in all her totality. And if someone believes that he has this, he deceives himself, he says. I take the, the resort, I resort to what Dante Alighieri did when he wrote the Divine Comedy, because he went all around heaven, he described this and that, and all the things that he saw, and finally came to the point where he had to uh, end up talking about our Lord who was before him. And he didn't feel up to it. So what he did, he wrote a beautiful sonnet regarding Our Lady and, and described him in her eyes. And I am, I am, as it were, it is therefore just that we look at those who saw Our Lady being assumed into heaven in order to see the reflection of her in them. You know? uh, when our Lord went up into heaven, you see, uh, he had more greatness than goodness. And here it's the other way around. We can say that Our Lady had more goodness than greatness. Uh, 
uh, to so because uh, when our Lord Jesus Christ in her ascension went up, he manifested this greatness and this goodness. Our Lady extended more goodness than greatness. Her lips gave a beautiful maternal smile to those who were looking at her, fixedly at this hour of incomparable splendor, knowing her and understanding her more and more. They felt, as it were, more attracted to her, to the degree in which she became, was elevated into heaven until she disappeared. A special clarity spread around in the place where this occurred, at this moment, above all and above everyone, with the promise of she who they no longer see. It was as if she said to them, Well, in reality, I remained with you. Pray, because I will always be present, and I will always be united with you. Gradually, this luminosity became extinguished, leaving remembrances and, uh, and uh, thoughts and uh, r reminders and thinking, reliving moments like that, that lasted for all eternity. We could say that Our Lady has had the, 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 the glow, the shine, the light of all glorious perfections. All the feast of all the, uh, the feast in which Our Lady resurrected was taken into heaven in body and soul, had, was the greatest celebration that had taken place in heaven since the resounding splendors of the ascension of our only begotten Son in Jesus Christ into heaven, because she is the masterpiece of creation, you know, as a mere creation, you see. And all of these marvel characteristics which we mentioned above, you know, uh, shun in a very special way, immensure, uh, incommensurable goodness, softness, sovereignty, dominion, attractiveness, virginal firmness, everything manifests itself in a shining way, mysteriously lighting up and accentuating itself, becoming accentuating and glowing. To, to the marvel, marveled, uh, ecstatic gaze of the angels and the saints who were there contemplating her uh, in eternity. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria.